judge. This was heard in the case of Mouton versus AXA Services Limited, wherein one of the charges which the plaintiff had to face, as worded uh, in that case, your history of warning in 2011. The court conceded that the charge was poorly drafted in that case, and that a history of warning could not amount to a charge, and rightfully so. However, it is submitted that a history of previous warning can be deemed as an aggravating factor when considering whether the present alleged offence warrants dismissal, especially if the previous warnings are of similar nature as to the present alleged offence. In the same line, in Marie versus Compagnie des Magasins Populaires Limited, the commission of previous act of misconduct was considered as merely amounting to an aggravating factor. It is a rule of law that when a warning had already been administered in respect of certain acts and doings committed by the worker, he cannot be sanctioned anew for those same acts and doings. Accordingly, French law dictates, I quote, en raison de la règle non bis in idem, les faits ayant fait objet d'un avertissement ne pourront pas être à nouveau sanctionnés. Now, moving to the next slide. After con having considered the different ways in which the employer shall gather information, it is to be highlighted that in cases where the employer decides to hold a hearing, the, the worker can request such information and documents. And the employer is then under a mandatory duty to provide the information documents that are relevant to the charge. This is provided under section 64.5 of the Workers' Rights Act. We shall now move to the second part of my presentation, which deals with the grounds for termination. So when assessing whether the workers' contract shall be terminated, the employer shall consider the different grounds for termination. There are three distinct grounds which can warrant dismissal, and these are alleged misconduct, alleged misconduct subject to criminal hearings, proceedings, and thirdly, poor performance. Coming to alleged misconduct, the alleged misconduct must be of such nature and gravity that in good faith, the employer had no other alternative than to terminate the employment. It is trite law that such a situation would arise where there is a proof of gross misconduct, i.e. foot grave or foot lewd, on the part of the worker. This will be dealt later in more details by my colleague Anuja. Such misconduct will inevitably affect the company's image and disrupt the smooth running of the company, such that it becomes impossible for the employment ties to be maintained. Some common examples of misconduct that can warrant termination of employment are insubordination, intoxication during working hours, or repeated absences. It is to be noted following the case of uh, MCFI versus Sumoru that repeated absences from work might constitute serious misconduct justifying termination of employment. The second ground relates to an alleged misconduct which is subject to criminal proceedings, i.e. a misconduct that amounts to a criminal offence. Example can be larceny or an assault on a colleague. The third ground relates to the unsatisfactory performance of the worker at work, despite previous reminders given to him to improve his performance. In fact, uh, poor performance englobes two notions, that of insuffisance professionnelle and that of faute professionnelle. What does insuffisance professionnelle mean? Insuffisance professionnelle would amount to a lack of competency at work such that the work is not to the required standard. And on, on the other hand, foot professional would amount in Italia to negligence, recklessness, defective performance of work, and, and or any failure in the performance of work. Furthermore, it must be satisfied that the worker's poor performance is such that the employer cannot in good faith take any other course of action than to end the employment. Hence, when considering the grounds for termination, it is highly recommended that legal assistance is sought in order to assess the seriousness of the alleged offence 
and to advise on a case-to-case -case basis which of the grounds would warrant a termination of employment. We shall now move to the third part of my presentation, which relates to statutory delays as prescribed under our laws. In cases of alleged misconduct, the worker must be notified within 10 days of the employer becoming aware of the alleged misconduct. So what is, how do we do that? How do we notify the client, the employer, the employee of this? It is to be noted that the notification of the charge shall be either handed personally to the worker or must be sent at the usual or last known place of residence of the worker. If the worker refuses to accept delivery or fails to take delivery after being notified that a notification awaits him at a specified post office, the notification in such cases is deemed to have been duly served on the day the employee refuses to accept delivery or is notified that it awaits him at the specified post office. After having been notified now, the worker will have at least seven days to answer the charge. Here he is given the opportunity to dispel any suspicions that there may be against him before action is taken to deprive him of his employment. Eventually, termination will not occur we look at not later than seven days after the worker has answered the charge or secondly, where the charge is subject to an oral hearing. That is a DC after completion of that hearing. Similarly, in cases of alleged misconduct subject to criminal proceedings, the worker must be notified within 10 days of the employer becoming aware of the conviction by the court of first instance. Upon notification, the employee will then have at least seven days to answer the charge. And in such cases, termination will occur within, there's a difference here, within seven days of completion of the hearing. Moving to the next slide, it is important to note that when it comes to alleged misconduct or alleged misconduct subject to criminal proceedings, the employer may carry out an investigation first and the 10 days for notification shall commence to run only after the investigation has been completed. This is provided under Section 64.3 of the Workers' Rights Act. Lastly, in cases of poor performance, there is no time limit prescribed under our laws for notification. However, similarly as with misconduct, the worker must be given at least seven days to answer the charge. Termination in such cases will occur within seven days of completion of the hearing. That concludes my presentation for today. Thank you for your attention.